one of the simplest options we have when we want to be able to serialize objects is declaring the class, its object we want to serialize and deserialize, as a serializable class. All it takes is adding the serializable attribute to the definition of that class. Adding the serializable attribute to the definition of the class person shall enable us to serialize and deserialize objects instantiated from this specific class. We should also make sure that each one of its fields is serializable as well. In this code sample, string and int are already serializable as most of the other .NET framework types. Once we have an object instantiated from that class, all we need in order to serialize that object is a binary formatted object. Once we have one, we can call the serialize method on the binary formatted object, passing over a stream, a reference for a stream object through which we want the data to be written and a reference for the object we want to serialize, the outcome of the serialize method of calling the serialize method would be a serialization of the object we have instantiated earlier from the class person and writing all data through this stream directly to this file. Once we have a file with data which is the outcome of an object serialization, we can get that data from the file and create back the object by calling the deserialize method. Calling deserialize on a binary formatted object, passing over the reference to the stream that connects the specific file in which the data resides, deserialize method returns a reference for an object created from that data. In this case, we know the object is person, so we cast the returned reference to person and then print it to the screen. Let's see how does it work. As you can see, the output, which is the result of the toString method, shows the name and ID fields hold the same data, those fields hold when we create a person object here when the code just starts its execution.